Hey guys, Charlie Moore here, be with me, and I'm gonna teach you the things not to do um, when uh, setting up a bee house. So, let's start with the hardware itself, okay? On the hardware items, the things that you don't want to do is that you don't want to use um, bamboo, you don't wanna use anything plastic, such as plastic straws, um, you don't wanna use native reeds if they're not native from your particular environment, you don't wanna use wooden blocks. Now the reason for this, and we'll start with the bamboo. Bamboo is a non-native plant here to the U.S. And bamboo, if, if any moisture gets inside, the moisture doesn't escape. So what happens is it starts developing a lot of bacteria on the inside. And then the bees are going to start going in there. They're going to put their nesting chambers in there and laying their cells in there. And it's adversely going to impact the bee. The other reason why bamboo is no good at all, and this primarily is the interior wall lining of bamboo is very rigid. As the bees are crawling inside and out of the bamboo, um, the, ba the bees' wings can get damaged as it's moving in and out of that nesting hole. Um, and a lot of times too, a lot of the, house, the bee houses that are in the marketplace that utilize bamboo, it's all completely the wrong size nesting hole. Um, you know, there's specific size nesting holes that these bees are looking for. And most of the time, the bamboo is just too big. So if you have that there, instead of it turning into a native bee house, it's not. It's just going to get filled mostly with spiders and ants. So that's uh, for the bamboo. Now, for the native reeds, the reason why you don't want to use the native reeds um, or, or lake bed reeds is that if they're not from your particular environment. Now, I'm not saying that you can't use them. But if you harvest them yourself from your own local environment, which is very easy to do, and I'll, I'm going to do a tutorial video on how to make your own native reed tubes, but if you're buying them, most likely they're being shipped to you from a location that's not like, uh, not uh, your native environment. So when they're getting sent to you, it can contain bacteria and pathogens that the native bees in your backyard have never been introduced to and it could possibly spread a new disease in the environment. So we like to try to keep things as natural as possible. So even though we're putting up an artificial house, what we're doing is trying to keep it as sterile as possible because we have diminished the nesting sites available for our native bees because of how clean we generally are with grooming our properties. Um, another thing, a big one not to do, um, is spray pesticides. Uh, pesticides that will not only kill the bees, but it will also, the chemical scent of it will make the bees completely leave and disperse. If you don't have the pollinators there, your garden's not going to do as good, your flowers aren't going to do as good, so don't do any pesticides. Now, real quick, back to those nesting materials. Um, with wood blocks and wood trays. Now, wood trays are laminates that you see compact close together where you could separate and they have pre-drilled holes so you can easily remove to get the cocoons out. Now they may work well for the first few years, but if you don't maintain them well, what happens is that they'll tend to warp over time, losing its form and shape. The other is that if you don't clean them properly with any of the diseased holes, and I'll go into that in, a, um, in another segment, um, what happens with those is that it, it spreads the pathogens year after year, uh, significantly impacting the health of the native bees. So you want to have as sterile as possible um, and non-chemical um, nesting tubes. So we use, um, we use FDA grade paper tubes. So these paper tubes, they come from an FDA facility. Uh, we make them to spec. So you're gonna have an eight millimeter, a six millimeter, and a four millimeter hole. This is an eight millimeter particularly. And these are the hole sizes that of the thousand plus hole nesting above ground bees, these are the sizes that they're looking for to nest in. Anything less than four millimeter, not really. Anything more than eight millimeter, not really. Um, and then there's a fallacy too, that spring bees use eight millimeter holes and summer bees use a six millimeter hole. It's absolutely not true. You have, of those thousand species, they all emerge at different periods of time from early spring through late summer. And all of these bees, and especially regionalized, they're all different sizes and based on different seasons. So you might have a mason bee, for instance, come out in, in, the, in the summertime. Um, you may have what's known as the summer bee. Um, 
you know, use an eight millimeter hole. So having that diversity of holes, the size holes inside of your nesting house is going to optimize the, uh, to attract the different native species of bees that are looking for a nesting site. Now, what other things that you should not do? So outside of not doing, um, not spraying any chemicals, try to stay, for, stay away from any hybridized plants that don't create any pollen. As, mu as much as and as beautiful as they look, if they're not creating any pollen, you're not really helping anything for the native bees. So you really want to focus on the key points to just making your yard as ecologically healthy as possible and as natural as possible, really letting the order of things happen. So the big points are proper nesting materials, okay? Making sure your nesting material is protected by an outer house, such as this, where no rain will get inside because of the overhang. Um, and, um, and use the proper nesting materials as well. That, that, that's, I can't say that enough. I mean, even with the drilled blocks of wood, again, over time, if there's any diseased bees that are using that drilled hole inside, that disease is staying in there. So every time that new bee is going inside of there, it's spreading that pathogen around. Um, and the most important thing do not do is do not buy bees. Do not buy cocoons. They're now becoming more and more readily available commercially. And the problem is that out of all the commercial bees available, there's only one species, one species of the thousand plus species being sold that's actually native to the United States. Um, the other bees, the other bees were introduced um, and are being tested as be, uh, becoming invasive. Um, and some of them, uh, some of their cocoons are actually carrying parasites that are not native to your environment at all, such as the little parasitic wasp on um, what's known as the leaf cutter bee, also known as the mega chile. Don't buy bees. You don't need to buy bees. Um, be patient with your bee house. If you set it up in the right position, you have plenty of native flora you have your garden going. The bees, once they sense a food source, they're going to look for a housing source. Once they start nesting in here, you now have your own controlled population of a true native species of bees. When you introduce a new species of bee into a, into a new environment, now you've created an invasive species that is going to be battling your native species for, the, for that same limited resource of food, pollen, nesting sites, and nesting substrate. So most importantly, do not buy bees. Simply hang this, same as a birdhouse. You're not going to buy birds to bring to your property to go inside of your birdhouse. Hang the birdhouse, the birds will come. Hang the bee house, the bee house will come. Now, if you see bees not nesting, there's some other items, and I'll go into that in another tutorial video, but these are the quick things of just do not to do with your native bee house. Thank you guys so much for doing your part in helping to create backyards across America and the health and population of our native bees. Charlie Moore out, be with me.